The United States is now commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Civil War, but that's also the 150th anniversary of emancipation. It's a good time for all of us to think about what emancipation meant, why it was needed, and also for us at the university to consider that this was an institution uh, whose founder owned slaves, many of whose early faculty probably owned slaves, possibly even the university itself owned slaves. We're going to celebrate our bicentennial beginning in 2017, and I'd like to have this part of our past unearthed and understood before we begin that bicentennial. The work that's taking place now in terms of building a research infrastructure will last for many years to come. So many people will learn from the work of the President's Commission on Slavery and University, the local advisory board and the national advisory board. Um, there are things that we have no way of understanding until we can get into the papers uh, that have existed for some time, until we can interview individuals who may have some knowledge around the community, so we can explore some of the local entities such as churches where enslaved individuals, uh, once they were free, had an opportunity to attend. Um, and historians in general who have been doing work around uh, slavery and uh, institutions of higher education. So we're aware of the fact that the university has a very tumultuous and troubled history, but I believe that we're in the most progressive period um, of time, really, at the University of Virginia. And a lot of that is thanks to the Commission for uh, Slavery in the University. Those members, the administration, President Teresa Sullivan, really noticed our issue and they decided to help us and they decided that it was a vital part of our university's history. And so here we are today. So I, I don't think this is a question of revisiting slavery in the university today. This is a question of actually exploring this long history that slavery was a part of Virginia in the 18th and 19th centuries. When the university is founded, uh, the day it opens, there are between 90 and 120 slaves living here. This is something that has been insufficiently explored. I think there's a, a great teaching moment that's available here to bring community students and faculty together. Clearly, the university was built in part by uh, slave labor. I think more importantly, and something that really sort of pervades the, the sense of the university is you have a founder of the university, uh, Thomas Jefferson, who's known for you know, Declaration of Independence, and yet he was a slave owner. I do believe that it's unfair to judge, completely judge someone according to our standards and our mores, because we have access to information that, they, that another time may not have, and because we certainly do live in a very different moral atmosphere, let's say, a social atmosphere. On the other hand, I do believe that there's somewhere inside of each of us, we know instinctively what is right and what is wrong and what really goes too far. I mean, the whole issue of slavery elicits sometimes very extreme viewpoints in, in many people, and Thomas Jefferson certainly does himself. And that's because he, he does, he pers personifies all the contra contradictions in the, the nation when it was founded. However, there are still some conservative elements at the university that feel that this research and this interest are unsuitable at this time, that there are other issues that the university needs to be grappling with. But I believe this is an important part of the university's history, and the university has always been historically minded about its past, and so I see this as another component that is worthy of the university's time, attention, and resources. It is so difficult to visually reconstruct the past, especially in the 19th century around the topic of slavery. Photography only enters into the modern world in the 1840s and isn't widespread until after the end of slavery. Then there are artists, but not many, who choose to turn pen and sketch and occasionally paintings 
um, to the topic of slavery, but they're very few, and, they're, and so are opportunities to visually see inside that world are very few. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be involved in a project uh, two years ago which identified uh, previously unknown graves uh, adjacent to and north of the University Cemetery. And based on some uh, documentary evidence from the late 19th century, we're uh, very confident that these uh, individuals that we identified there uh, that were previously unknown, uh, given the size, the number of individuals that were identified, the family units which were found there, children, youth, adults, and the spatial relationships of the graves that this is uh, the enslaved community of the University of Virginia. So right now the President's Commission on Slavery in the University is finishing its first year of existence. It is the, I think in a way, the culmination of about 10 years of ad hoc work by students doing research, by individual faculty projects in class, and by student energy outside of class. And so I think uh, where we are now is we have a commission, we have a vision for where we are headed, we have hired a postdoc to come in to do three years of research, and we have developed a website. So we're in the early stages of this, but uh, things are really ramping up as we speak. I'm thankful for the University of Virginia and for President Sullivan to establish this commission and to celebrate the life of those slaves who worked real hard. And so I thank God for her and we bless their efforts of the commission and look for great things. I think one of the, the, the benefits of the commission and the work of the commission is to take the narrative of slavery as, as people who are objects and move them to uh, a narrative about subjects and about agency and the way agency and subjectness is developed. And um, by looking at the various communities that have come up around the university, you get a very good sense of uh, over time how communities are developed and what is occurring between those communities. How do you move from a foster site to a Canada site? or how do, how, do, how do the fosters operate within the construct of that one particular community. And I think that's, that's the work of the commission as well, and, and, and vital to understanding Charlottesville and its, its development um, beyond just the university. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about the initiative of the, the President's Commission on Slavery because it will bring together research that's already been done about slavery at the university and also conduct further research, just compile it all so it can be used to help people understand the people who were in slavery at the university, to help understand the people who kept them in slavery, and the whole beginnings of the university. That's the period I'm most interested in and know most about. And then uh, use that research for various programs to, to spread the word about the enslaved community at the university and the conditions of their lives. When enslaved individuals died, somewhat paradoxically, that was one of the moments where the enslaved community had the most control over their lives. So through death, they controlled their day, that ceremony, that ritual. And enslaved people didn't always have control over their daily rituals. Uh, downstairs in this pavilion, there's a, there's a stone room. It's the original brick and a big place for uh, the stone uh, cooking to take place. And uh, of course, slaves worked right there. I know for a fact that the resident in this pavilion, whose name was George Bladerman, a German, scholar brought to the United States who taught modern languages. Uh, he owned quite a few slaves and they were used right here to serve his family. Uh, individual students uh, had slaves. They weren't allowed to bring their own, but they, were, they rented them in, in Charlottesville. We hear that in Missouri in the present day, policemen beat a black man and then arrest that black man because his blood stained their uniforms. 
And we hear that in the slavery days, when the University of Virginia owned slaves, that the students beat slaves and beat him so badly that the university chastised him, but didn't punish him in any way because he was a slave. He was a piece of property. So I'm happy to hear about this initiative and to know that the university is going to examine its past and teach us who these people were, these enslaved people. Where did they come from? What did they do? What was their work? What was their life? What was their living about? One of the difficulties in trying to reconstruct the stories of those who were enslaved is that we often only have access to a very small part of their history. They might be mentioned in a document by a slave owner, and so we might know their name. We might know what jobs they held at the plantation. We might know who their other family members are, but we're unlikely to have access to the rest of their life to understand the people they loved, the people they lost through death or disease, the people who might have been sold away through the slave trade. We usually have a difficult time reconstructing the full richness of their lives. Something has to, we have to do something tangible, more than a monument, more than a memorial, but something that creates, if you will, a, a heartfelt ministry to those who suffered. Uh, and that could be, even if we said there were 67 bodies, we know there are many more. What if we were to say something like, we're going to have 67 scholarships? I'll be conducting the historical research in the archives. I'll also be working in the community gathering stories of oral history from the African-American community, many of whom are likely descendants of those who were enslaved at the university. I want to uncover every single story that could be written or passed down through generations. I want to know the names of all the people who were enslaved here. I want to know how their life was on a daily basis. I want to know how they were treated, how they survived, and what kind of community they created within the bonds of enslavement at the university. I personally hope that th this commission, and I feel honored to be a part of it as an alumni of the university, I feel like this commission has the opportunity to set a national dialogue, to continue to be a leader, to take its rightful place with Monticello in the important history that Thomas Jefferson had in our country, and also to take leadership as a university on dealing with the issues of racial legacies and histories that make us uncomfortable. Uh, my concern is that we did not know one name for these people because we really realized that they were important. And as I address my congregation, I am sure that the very people I'm talking to are relatives of some of the people who are buried in that cemetery. But I am encouraged because this means that now we're looking. And as we look and as we open the books and the, open the archives, I'm certain that we'll find more about this. But for us as a community, it is a good thing that these people are being remembered and honored. Yes, we have come a long way and only the most embittered, only the most uh, irrational would suggest otherwise. But we should not be too tied to these progressivist narratives and that the hope is that the uh, commission will allow us to look more soberly on the very concept of progress and how sluggish uh, it can be. This is a big question. I would like for at the end of the next three years for there to be a much more significant understanding of the relationship of slavery to the university and a better understanding about the lives of the enslaved here at the university. And I would like to see this material more, much more powerfully incorporated into the very fabric of the university. I am incredibly excited about the next three years of research and I hope to uncover all the hidden stories of the people who were enslaved here at the university. And most importantly, I'm looking forward to unsilencing the silent. We've learned the story of Henry Martin, for example, and we've commemorated his role at the chapel. But there must be other people we didn't know about whose roles at the university 
were unknown and not commemorated and not told to other generations simply because of the color of their skin. So there is a history there that is part of the university history and we need to know it to have a complete history of ourselves. But we also know that history carries forward in some ways to our present time. Maybe it will help shed light on issues of diversity that affect our community, that affect the Commonwealth, that affect the whole United States, if we can begin to forthrightly understand our own history. This is just the beginning. The President's Commission on Slavery and the University Charge is to explore and develop the research infrastructure and provide advice and recommendations on commemoration of the contributions by the enslaved to the university. In addition to the African American Cemetery commemoration, there are many other possibilities, including physical monuments, documentaries, naming buildings after slaves, establishing scholarships and professorships, and interactive educational media in the Rotunda Visitor Center. The work of this commission will continue into the bicentennial. We are thankful for the support of the university, our local and national advisory boards, and for your support. And as I said, this is just the beginning.